Well hello, in the last video I covered how to get up and running with ESP Rainmaker and if you didn't see that one there's a link in the description below. This time I want to show you an easy way of getting up and running with over the air updates, possibly the most useful feature of these wireless devices. ESP Rainmaker has two ways of doing that, one is through the web dashboard you used when you set up your account but the other which you'll use today is the CLI or command line interface and I like to use that since it provides visibility on what's working and what went wrong when it doesn't work. That said I've found it very reliable and do keep watching till the end because there are a couple of gotchas along the way that I'll show you how to work around. Before we get started I'd like to thank everyone that subscribed since the last video. Believe it or not you're only 5% of the people that watch so 95% of viewers won't even know this video exists. So please remember to hit the subscribe button. Your likes and shares make a big difference not least to me since it gives me motivation to cover more topic. Right, now for Rainmaker over the air. The first thing we need to do is make our app uh, able to use the OTA service. So the window on the left here is what we'll use to represent the ESP32 and I've got an ESP32 connected to it. And yes, we're doing over the air update on a vanilla ESP32 with Rainmaker and not an S2 or a C3. All you need is to have the ESP IDF and Rainmaker installed. And yes, there's another video in that and I'll put a link in the description below. I'm going to use the temperature sensor uh, example since it doesn't have over the air update as standard. So let's open that in our editor. So Rainmaker, examples, temperature sensor, and that will do fine. Okay, and what we want is uh, app main. Okay, so um, what does have over the air updates is the switch example. So we'll open that one too. Okay. And then we'll have a look at what the main differences are. So if we uh, put this on the right. So on the left here we have the temperature sensor. And on the right we have the switch. And let's scroll down and look at what gives us the over the air update capability. And that is simply these few lines here. So we'll copy them and we'll pop them into a place in our app down here at line 63 I think um, we'll just paste those in now obviously um, there's going to be libraries so let's look at what there is um, let's just take all of those we'll be super lazy and paste them in and save that and that is us done with the switch example so we can close that we've saved uh, the changes we've made and now we can go back to our command line interface okay so I prefer this uh, it, I find it the easiest way of working because uh, it doesn't have all the idiosyncrasies of uh, the IDEs and they all might be different depending on what your favorite is first thing to do idf uh, dot py set target esp32 and i'll speed this up for you right now idf dot py build awesome that's that done idf.py flash monitor always remember to put in the port to avoid uh, difficulties and pop your device into boot mode And with a bit of luck, I've got one of these uh, do it 
version ones and uh, to be honest it's a, a bit of a waste of a CP2104 which are in fairly short supply right now because it always needs manual intervention. Okay, and as you can see, it's already provisioned in my Rainmaker. There it is, it's reporting. Temperature, 25, and it will do that every minute, updating every minute. Okay, so let's move on to configuring the command line interface now and see what that looks like. So I'm going to do that with a separate window, the one on the right here, so you can see both things happening at the same time. And uh, let's see what that looked like. First of all, we need to look at um, which Python version we have. Oh, 3.9, that'll do nicely. And then we need to paste this line in. All the setup instructions are on the uh, ESP Rainmaker website. Okay, and now Python get pip dot UI. There's our ESP has just updated its uh, temperature a couple of times. Okay, that's done. And now we go pip3 install minus r requirements.txt. And this is the home of the first gotcha. Because everything looks like it works. And then it doesn't because it can't install the cryptography but there's an easy solution to that okay so let's go back to our uh, editor and let's open a file and the file we want to open is in Rainmaker command line requirements.txt Go to cryptography and delete this part here, the version for cryptography. Save it, close it because we're done. Come back here and rerun install. It works. Then we get rid of the install bit and we type freeze requirements.txt and if we want to look we'll see it's cryptography 3.4.7 the current version that's been installed done that's set up so let's see if we can log into our account now an email address of your choice preferably the one attached to your account And here's the second gotcha okay you have to set the idf path environment variable and the way we do this is c colon backslash in my case my esp idf lives there and now we need to do export dot bat now it's all up to date and now we can log in type your password mine is secret whoops I just can't type yeah now we're logged in let's see what we can get from it so we go Python rainmaker.py get nodes will give us a list of the nodes we have. We might as well copy this because we're going to need it shortly.
So plenty of uh, plenty of things to uh, to use on your nodes. So here we have um, our configuration temperature sensor and what it returns, what type it is. The firmware version will come to the note ID and most importantly that it is set up for over the air. There it is. That's the template. Let's go and modify our application now and do what uh, to have it uh, do what we want. So here we are. Um, what I'm going to do is go to the app priv and we're going to change this to start at 10 degrees and update every five seconds. OK, we can save that. We've changed the app to do what we want. The next thing we need to do is to go to CMake Lists. CMake lists.txt. And we need to update the version number. Now, we'll save that. But you don't have to update the version number every time. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll move to the left hand window. We're going to type control close square bracket and get out of the monitor. And I'm going to show you how you can change the parameters. Um, to prevent you having to update that um, version number every time. So idf.py menu config. And here we are. Rainmaker config. OTA config and you can see here that we can skip the firmware version check if we wish. I'm going to leave that unchecked but if you're doing rapid update on local things uh, just in development you might want to use that option. So we can reverse out of that. Okay so let's build our app idf.py build there all done so now what I'm going to do again is I'm going to put this into monitor. So we'll monitor this. So we can see what's happening. So let's go over to the command line uh, interface on the right hand side here. And we're going to go Python Rainmaker. Well, we could just go yep, like that. OTA upgrade, put in the node ID. OK, and where do we get the binary? OK, we need the path to the binary. So go back to the build folder. And at the bottom of the build folder, you'll find the temperature sensor dot bin. All we need to do is copy the path to that. Put it away, paste it in here and hit enter. Now it's uploading the firmware image. It's informed my ESP32 that it's updating. And as you can see, the two move together pretty much. It tells you what's going on in the command line and what's going on um, on the ESP32. Of course, you don't have to monitor it, um, but it's good for this demonstration. And that's us. We should be just about done. There we go. And it will reboot in about 10 seconds. There we go, we've got a reboot, it's waiting for the MQTT connection, 
it's already updated starting at 10 10.5 11 11.5 so it's updating every five seconds as we expected it to so there we are um, that's ESP Rainmaker over the air updates in under 10 minutes don't forget to add any questions you have in the comments below I really enjoy the discussion with you and until the next time thanks for watching